has the dirt and bull market in the industrials finally peaked? That's the question we need to be asking ourselves after witnessing what happened with longtime Kramer fave Eaton last week. Remember, Eaton's a classic industrial that manufactures electrical control products, power management systems, hydraulics, truck transmissions, and aerospace components. And we own the stock from my travel trust, which you can follow along at actionlearsplus.com. But late on Friday, July 18th, yes, after the close on a Friday, Eaton came out with a downside earnings pre-announcement. Then last Tuesday, the company reported a quarter that was widely hailed as a disappointment on Wall Street, which sent the stock tumbling 8% single session. While Eaton's earnings and revenues were both in line with recently guided down estimates, this was a case where the company really had to deliver a clean quarter because the last couple of quarters were frankly pretty inconsistent. But clean this was not, with the margins in Eaton's big electrical systems business falling short of expectations for the second quarter in a row. At the same time, we heard that the company's not planning to spin off its vehicle business because of unfavorable tax implications. And this is something that a lot of people were counting on to help unlock value. After the quarter, not one, not two, but three bulge bracket firms eat, uh, downgraded Eaton, Goldman Sachs, Deutsche, and J.P. Morgan. Do three downgrades in one day represent the kind of total capitulation that can often signal the pain is coming to an end? Or could it be that these analysts are ahead of the curve because the stock has continued to fall and there's more pain to come? Let's check in with Sandy Cutler, the chairman and CEO of Eaton, and find out more about the quarter where his company's headed. Mr. Cutler, welcome back to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. How are you tonight? Okay, um, Sandy... Let, I want to really want to dig into the earnings, entire earnings situation because there was a belief that there were things that were going to happen in Eaton, including on July 14th, a Morgan Stanley note saying that the stars are aligning for a spinoff of uh, the vehicle division that just simply weren't in the cards. How did it get to the point there were a lot of chatter about something happening when you knew years ago this could never happen? Yeah, Jim, on, on the issue of, of, and I'd like to address the two issues I think were a concern for investors in our second quarter result. One, obviously, was our clarification that we are not able to do a tax-free spin uh, of any significant business out of Eaton until five years after the original close date of our acquisition of Cooper. Now, let me step back on this. In every public setting since May of 2012, when I announced the Cooper transaction, we've emphasized that it was not our plan nor our strategic intent to divest our vehicle business. Unfortunately, I think over the last couple of months in what I would call inversion mania, there have been a number of, of investors who have indicated that they thought it would make sense for us to lay the ground for someone else to invert their business. That's not been our intent, although we did do the homework because we had a number of shareholders represent this point of view. And after detailed homework using outside investors, or outside uh, sources, as well as experts from inside the company, we've concluded that simply is not possible, but it was not our intent. And so, um, obviously, I'm disappointed that we had that reaction to that event because it has never been our intent to do that, and we've been very clear on multiple times. The second, second issue you mentioned was that of, of earnings in one of our segments. And I just want to put it in perspective because the story on Eaton hasn't changed. We hit our revenue right on the button. We exceeded our earnings by one cent. We concluded the uh, very painful settlements for two 10-year-long legal um, uh, piece of litigation the company's been involved in, and we were able to sell two aerospace businesses successfully in the quarter while still integrating the largest acquisition in the history of Eaton, which will attribute another $30 million of savings in yeah, the but, second but, half. So I think, I think the quarter on itself had these two issues that obviously have caused, and, and I don't feel good about it, and we take full responsibility for it, two sources of, of concern in the quarter. Okay, but Sandy, you, you did that guide down Friday after the close, which frankly is not not your style, I have to say. And uh, Friday after the close is the type of thing that companies do when they don't want things known. Uh, and you also uh, had hydraulic bookings that were very disappointing. You had margins for electrical systems and services that were disappointing. And this is the fifth quarter that I regard as being incredibly... I read... I've read many more quarters than you have, sir. And this... Your quarters are too hard to read. And because your quarters are hard to read, I can't even figure out myself what your company's worth. And I've been a huge backer of yours, sir. Well, Jim, let's take the individual pieces. In terms of the litigation, the two sources litigation I mentioned, and the gain on the aerospace business, we had a number of investors understandably asking us for how should we think about the after-tax impact of that. As soon as we had that after-tax impact, and that obviously is, is a very um, a complicated piece of work to complete, we released it. I agree with you. Unfortunately, that was a Friday. 
Would it have been better for us to wait till Monday? It was not and does not ever um, be part of our program not to be transparent. We really worked quite hard to be transparent. So we got that information out as quickly as possible. And we indicated what those would be worth because it would be very hard for any investor outside to be able to calculate the after-tax impact of those three pieces. Again, all three pieces of those were things that were done in the, with the benefit of shareholders in mind. I don't disagree with you, Jim, that we've had a number of quarters where we've had issues related to the finalization of the purchase price accounting, and that is a terribly opaque subject for people to understand. But I actually think the trends in the second quarter hold very good promise for the future. The reason the electrical um, services and systems business was weak was let's go back and look at the bookings the last four quarters. 1.8%, 1.9%, negative 3.5%, negative 7%. And we were quite clear coming out of the first quarter that that would set up a weaker quarter. It was still weaker, and I take right. full accountability for that, than we thought it would be. However, I think the very good news is after four quarters of disappointing bookings in that business, we had an outstanding quarter in the second quarter of 7%. 6% in the electrical products, 9% in the aerospace business. And I think that sets up the $500 million of additional revenue that we've said that we would recognize in the second half right. of this year. Oh, well, but sorry, the problem is, is that it, when you read the downgrades, they, don't, they think that because you set up things like that, we're just going to be in for another disappointment in the second half. And that uh, I'm just quoting Goldman. We have lost some confidence in Eaton's ability to execute while digesting the largest acquisition in the company's history, series of missteps over the last five quarters. And they, uh, like many of the others who downgraded, believe that you have set the expectations too high for the second half. And we're going to be back doing the same kind of very difficult conversation when that happens. Well, Jim, and I, and I can't say anything that's going to convince you of a different point of view, except that we've looked very hard at it. Uh, I think we, we understand both the nature of, of what we've laid out for the second half, and I think we have very good reasons for why we believe it should be the center point of our guidance. Uh, all of that increased revenue will come in the electrical businesses. As I just mentioned, we had quarters of 6% and 7% bookings in both of those quarters. We are very confident of the additional $30 million of synergies that we'll get. The Cooper integration is very much on pace and, and going very, very well. And we are assuming that in this fall, we don't see what we've seen the past two falls, which is a government shutdown around government spending. We think that won't occur simply because we have a mid-year election. If we're wrong on that, that'll change, obviously, volume projections. But we think that that's the high probability case, that we won't see another government financial crisis. Having said all that, we understand the importance of, of execution, Jim. That's one of the reasons I obviously wanted to come on your show tonight, and we take very seriously our commitment to do so. All right, well, that's very fair, and I thank you for coming on, Sandy. It's a very tough quarter, very, 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 uh, very big decline, and let's hope that the credibility can come back. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Jim. Always good to talk with you. That's Sandy Cutler, Chairman CEO of Eaton Corporation. Three downgrades. Uh, difficult to get your arms around. Uh, after the break, I'll try to make you or save you some money.